up guys uh, normally I'm not one to do frame reviews but there was one that came out a while ago that really caught my attention and while debating whether or not to buy it uh, looking around on YouTube there was literally no reviews of it at the time so uh, which there still isn't at the time of uploading this there might be a couple but uh, for the most part there's not really any reviews but anyway uh, so uh, this is the uh, Quartzstone Merlin uh, well, the bottom plate of it anyway. Uh, we still have to put this thing together. I kind of already started and put the V-block in there, so that'll make it a little easier. Uh, the top plate, and then I put all the screws in the bag so I wouldn't lose them. Um, a couple things you're going to need to uh, assemble this. Uh, one is brute force to get the V-block together, which is kind of, kind of fun to do. And then uh, the other thing you're going to need, you're going to need uh, one of these little uh, hex wrenches, hex screws, whatever you want to call them. Uh, a pair of pliers to get the V-block on. And then of course you're gonna need a baking tray because you know that's how it works. So to build the Merlin, uh, it's a pretty simple process. Of course you want to put the V the V tail block together because that's that's kinda of hard to do. Make sure you put it on the baking tray. Um, I'm just gonna dump the rest of the parts out here. Okay, like so, I'm gonna roll away. Uh, and then of course you can't put it together without the tools, so let's put the tools on there. Alright, then you're gonna wanna go to, uh, I have a toaster oven. Uh, any oven will do. Uh, the smaller the better though because toaster ovens I found they can actually, they actually uh, cook it a little bit faster so um, you just want to put that in there. You're going to want to set it to about 400 and then you're going to want to go ahead and cook it. So yep, there it's, there it's cooking in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, check back in on the quad. I think it's about done cooking. So, uh, and you know, if you've ever cooked quads before, uh, you'll know that it takes about 15-20 uh, minutes, depending on the size of the quad, but uh, with this quad it's a little bit different because uh, you can get the, the top mount configuration by uh, cooking it longer, and then uh, shorter, of course, will get you the, the uh, undercarriage. So let's go ahead and, oh, it looks like that. Okay. So there you can see, it's all done cooking. It's a nice, nice even bake, actually. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, set this back on the table and... Uh, well, I'll tell you some more things about it. Oh, the Merlin. I haven't even flown it yet, and I am already in love with this quad. Uh, so, let me tell you a little bit about it more. <laughs> now that it's uh, done cooking, as you know. So, um, really, this is quite a nicely designed frame. I really like it. It's really nice, strong carbon fiber. This is, like, really nice, lightweight carbon fiber compared to some. Plus, it's, like, super clean cut. Like, I pulled it out of the box. The only thing that was kind of upsetting when you tried to put it together is I had to file down the, the V-block parts of it a little bit. You can kind of see there, a little bit long. But uh, it almost didn't fit, actually didn't fit quite right there. But I got it to where it's solid enough. And then the first time I put it together, too, I didn't put any, uh, I put some Loctite in there this time, as you can see. Because uh, I put it together in there, and it kind of shook around. And I was like, that's not, I don't like that when I'm flying. So I want to go ahead and solid that up. Uh, really like the, the camera plate there, that's pretty neat. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work when I want to uh, put my camera in there. I don't know if you're supposed to just bolt it to those. I'll probably do an update video when I do finally build this thing. I'm still waiting on all the parts, but or if you just stick things through the holes there. I don't know. But, uh, I really like the, uh, the standoffs though. Those are nice steel touch compared to a lot of things. Um... Few blocks pretty easy. It's a pretty easy quad to put together. And of course you can use yeah, pictures online, but you can flip that and put the camera housing and all the internal stuff underneath it and then run it on top. But uh yeah, compared to uh I got my alien here. It's a little broken. This is six inch alien comparatively, so you can see there this is quite quite small. Uh this thing is only meant for four inch props, I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, you can see there that it's it's pretty tiny. It's, I think, 185, 180, 190, somewhere in there. But it's a tiny little, tiny little quad there. So, we're going to do a 6 inch prop. <laughs> Looks tiny. But, I mean, quads on this size aren't going to be generally too heavy, but this thing is, feels pretty lightweight without anything on it. So, that's pretty exciting thought for me. Now, as far as props go, this thing can only spin... 4-inch props. Here's a 5-inch prop to demonstrate. I mean, I put a motor on there earlier, but you can only, you can imagine. Yeah, see, it's gonna, it's gonna hit there when that's bolted on. And then also, back on here, so you had to run, it's gonna hit 
back there if you tried to run it. Five inch prop. So five inch prop, you're stuck with four inch props, which is the only kind of downside because I really like these uh, J tri blades. They're my favorite. But uh, I'll make get four inch versions and whatnot. And I thought about too, like with the top plate, if I'd have mounted it the other way around, then you could run. You technically you can run five inch on the prop, but you obviously don't want to run your battery there. Otherwise, you'll probably nick it with a prop. And that was my original. That's why I kind of kept it like that is because. I decided to mount the batteries on the bottom, one for CG preference, because that'll, that's just how I like, like to run it, and it'll help save it, and then also because if you stick the battery on top to where, like, say it's upside down, and then you hit something, and then the battery slides, and then you get a prop naked, and the whole thing goes up in flames, so that wouldn't be good, so I went ahead and uh, stuck a couple uh, spare co uh, jump covers laying, I had laying around on there, just for reference, but you can kind of see there uh, just how the stand up, how the, I guess, what do you want to call it, where the prop will sit, they'll be about even. So that's kind of a nice thing I didn't realize when you're looking at it. No matter which way you mount the middle, you either, it's not going to matter, but yeah, that's pretty nice, pretty nice, uh, even field of plane, I guess is what it's called. It's a plane. Yeah, so. Yeah, you can kind of get the idea of what it'll look like. These are just old Cobras. I would not recommend running these. But uh, definitely get some higher KV motors for those foreign props. That'll help with speed on this thing. I actually plan to build this thing so it's race flight ready. So in terms of uh, batteries you could put on this thing, um, I probably plan on running, well, anywhere from a couple bigger ones I got. I run from 1600 to 1300. Uh, of course, I'm planning on mounting my batteries on the bottom so where there's a little more flexibility in the room because obviously the camera's not pointing down. I could even have a much bigger battery. I mean, weight's an issue, but, uh, you know, obviously with the 1600, you're not going to run into problems. So, uh, but, I mean, it depends how you want to mount this thing. But, like, if you were planning on uh, bottom mounting or just mounting on this plate, basically, uh, you may run into problems if you go any bigger than this, obviously, because it's freaking huge. But 1300 size battery will actually do quite well, I think, even just with top mounted. But I don't like top mounted because that throws a CG off. So, to kind of sum up the review of this frame, uh, it's a really nice, high quality frame. Like like I said earlier, the carbon fiber is really nice. You're not going to break that. Uh, it's just, I don't know, just something about it is just very sexy. I love it. It's appealing. Uh, Horace, you did a good job with the design. I really like it. Uh, everything down to like the little details like that, like in the camera plate. That's kind of nice. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, it's a, I don't know. The only thing, yeah, just the complaints with it is it's slightly heavy for this class, but of course it's not like an X-frame or a stripped-down frame. But, I mean, it's pretty, pretty minimal when it comes to frames nowadays. So, there's not a lot to it. There's a few things that could have been shaved down to save weight, but I think I'll be happy with it. Uh, yeah, the only other complaint I had was that the V-block doesn't quite fit perfect. Like, I think the this, the two co main carbon fiber parts that kind of hold it together, uh, they're just a little big, and it kind of had to file it down a little bit to get it. But uh, other than that, it's a really nice frame, and but you got to glue it a little bit. Yeah, I really like this thing. Can't wait to uh, fly it, and uh, I'll show you what I got when it's in. So there you go, a horse Merlin.